Hi, welcome to The Climate Leader. I'm here to offer you a powerful metaphor for making change at whatever level that you work. It's called the iceberg. It's going to bring you two things. The first is to help focus your attention on what we call areas of high leverage, the root cause drivers of issues that drive all of the events and all of the headlines and all the things that we say po see popping up day to day. The second is a fundamental principle of system thinking and system dynamics. It's the idea that the structure of the system, its delays, its feedback processes, the information flows, the ways that materials flow, the way that the overall system is interdependent, actually creates the long-term behavior of the system. Structure causes behavior. I know there was a lot of jargon right there. Just roll with me. Here we go. What we see above the water is just a small part of the iceberg, but that's where we focus our attention. What really draws all of us first are events. These are headlines in the newspaper about breaking news going on in the world, urgent emails with problems to solve, fires to put out, some new power plant is being proposed somewhere, drought-induced wildfire fires in Asia, a new technology that could help, things that grab our attention and call for our response. When we see events, we often react and we respond. And we must. We should address these events that come up. And yet we know that when we only focus on events, we aren't really affecting the things that actually drive long-term behavior of the system. So, can we get beyond being reactive? So we're going to look below the waterline on the iceberg to see the other things that are actually driving the behavior. At a lower level of the iceberg, we look at how events create trends over time. These are the patterns of behavior. We ask ourselves, has some important indicator been building? Has it been leveling? Has it been cycling up and down? When we think about climate, so many patterns of behavior are so important. If we know the trends, then we can be adaptive and anticipate the action we need to take before an event happens. We use foresight. We look back in time at the pattern of what has happened, and we look forward in time to see what is to come. We get ready. But what causes these patterns of behavior over time? What causes some things to escalate or grow exponentially? What causes other things to cycle or oscillate over time. Let's look even lower down on the iceberg to the systemic structures that are actually driving behavior over time. Now down here is the gold for change makers. These are the systemic structures and mindsets that are the driving forces of the patterns of behavior and events that we see up higher on the iceberg. And also, and note, there's a little jargon alert here. In the language of systems thinking and system dynamics, these are feedback processes. The ways that confidence in the climate movement creates positive results. And those results feed back to create confidence. Or systems traps like addiction and escalation. And delays in the system. For example, the supply chain for renewable energy as it moves from capacity in development to capacity in construction to capacity that's actually in use and retirement away. It can also be strongly held mindsets or beliefs. A belief like, my voice matters in the world, or technology will save everything. When we work at this level of systemic structure and mindset, we can take actions that create and transform the future rather than just react to things already set in motion. This is so important. We can take actions that create and transform the future rather than just react. There's more long-term leverage the deeper that you work on the iceberg. There's more power in working at these root cause levels by changing the systemic structure of the system. That's where we can really create the futures that we want to see over time. 
Let's try a simple example. We can use this framework of the iceberg to look at homelessness in a city. At one level, at the event level, we can be reactive and responsive. For homelessness, what do you do? You go give a homeless person $10 or a sandwich. At a deeper level, below the waterline, we address the patterns of behavior. We say, let's notice that shelter use is cyclical. We need to be ready, say in the winter, for more people. But at a deeper level, we know there are systemic structures and mindsets that have to do about housing availability and price, economic policy and jobs, and mental health actions. Or at the mindset level, what is our perception of people who are homeless as quote-unquote others or very different? What is our perception of what's quote-unquote fair? These are all much more deep-laden issues. That's one example how we can think about homelessness using this framework of the iceberg. Now please don't fall into kind of a either-or or binary way of looking at the iceberg. It's not that we're saying that reacting to events is bad and you have to spend all the time on systemic structure down at the bottom because that's good. It's not a helpful way to look at it. What we need, we think, in addressing climate is more balance, perhaps more balance towards affecting the root cause drivers or finding ways to work on work, root cause drivers that actually build upon all the energy and excitement people have about putting fires out, about reacting to events. You can apply this iceberg metaphor at any scale. Let's look at the global response to climate change. At the event level, this is climate-related disaster response, things like sending in food aid into drought areas of Africa, or rebuilding areas of New York and New Jersey after Hurricane Sandy. At a deeper level of patterns of behavior, it's about preparing for things we know are coming or are here already adaptation, building weather-ready cities, focusing on resiliency, allotting bigger budgets to disaster response. Down at the bottom of the iceberg is mitigation. This includes things like building renewable energy, energy efficiency, implementing carbon prices, protecting forests, in order to lower the risk of the events up at the top. Also at the bottom of the iceberg are feedback processes where we generate self-sustaining change, like by way of this feedback loop. Also at this level are mindsets. For example, letting go of the idea that some miracle technology will stop future climate change. So now let's shift away from this global example and shift to a level that's more practical to you. What I've given you is a metaphor for both thinking about leverage in the system but also this idea that structure causes behavior. Where we're going next is to help you apply these principles to whatever domain that you work in, whether it's at the neighborhood scale, or the city, or the state, province, country, in a business, a big business, a corporation, or a small business, or perhaps between countries. That's where we're going next. So there are two opportunities here. One is for more balance, and the balance is towards focusing on root cause drivers of climate change. Can you spend more time there as opposed to reacting to events? And the other one is to say, can you actually find ways to work on those root cause drivers in ways that build on the energy of putting out fires and dealing with the events at that level? The second big takeaway from this lesson is the number one most super important idea in the field of systems thinking and system dynamics. And it's a little jargony, but again, it is the idea that the structure of the system, that is, the way that it's all of its interdependencies, the delays, the material delays, the information flows, the feedback processes, the structure of the system causes its behavior. We shouldn't look outside for causes. Instead, we should try to understand how the system itself causes its own behavior. As you learn the fields of systems thinking and system dynamics, you get to cultivate your curiosity thinking, how is it that this system generates its own behavior? What is it about the systemic structure that's doing this? That, I hope, triggers some of your own thinking. All right, so those are the big two takeaways. Let's use these ideas and go get them.